Welcome to Ask the Expert. Today we have as our guest, Heidi Ma, coming to us from um, the White Institute at MIT. He's in the Janish lab there, and he's a postdoc. Um, and uh, he is, uh, his research is focusing on signaling pathways and epigenetic mechanisms regulating stem cells, differentiation, and maturation into functional endodermal cell types, such as hepatocytes and endocrine pancreatic cell types. And before joining the Janish lab, he worked on cell adhesion mechanisms underlying gas relation and colorectal cancer. And today we're gonna to talk about his really cool paper from Cell Reports in September, 2020, human T cells expressing a CD19 CAR T receptor provide insights into mechanisms of human CD19 positive cell destruction. So welcome, Hei Ting, how are you? Hi, good, Monica. Thank you very much for uh, the invitation and for the very kind introduction. Well, uh, I don't know. I get started? <laughs> you've done you've 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 done a lot, um, particularly in this postdoc. Um, that uh, you know, this paper is really, as I said before, is really elegant, and I'm really excited to have you walk um, everyone through it. So, yeah, without much further ado, let's let's start talking about it. Okay, all right. Uh, so first, uh, uh, thank Monica and uh, her team for this uh, uh, wonderful effort to establish this uh, much needed. Uh, forum for the um, type 1 diabetes patient and also uh, researchers. It's, it's a truly honor for uh, to have this opportunity to share some of our work and then hopefully to get feedback uh, um, from a, a fellow scientist and also from uh, uh, from anyone who ha have any questions. Um, so uh, yes, my name is Hai Ting. I'm a postdoc from uh, uh, Professor Yinish's lab. Um, so um, before I get started, I'd like to acknowledge the people um, that enable um, the, this work that uh, um, to some extent is on a canonical way of looking at uh, type 1 diabetes and some of the surprising result we obtained. So I'd like to yeah. thank my uh, mentor, Professor Yinish, and also uh, thank uh, um, uh, Professor Melton from Harvard and uh, Professor Gu from Vanderbilt for um, uh, very nice uh, discussions. Uh, also for a uh, collaborator from uh, uh, Jacob, uh, Jack, Jacob from uh, uh, Noah Nordisk for uh, discussion and uh, for the kind of support. Also uh, the Bacharach family for their uh, kind of support. So, um, so as uh, many of you are aware, uh, type 1 diabetes is a very uh, difficult disease and there are a lot of unknowns, especially for the human type 1 um, biology. However, a lot of the GIVA study, as many of the susceptible loci are located in the uh, genes or the regulatory element that are typically active in the immune cells, typically um, uh, uh, T cells. Uh, this is a, a, a plot from a very recent uh, remapping of the GIVAS uh, susceptible loci. As you can see, there are still um, uh, genes are regulating immune tolerance, such as this AIR gene that regulates the self antigen expression in the thymic epithelial cells to for the negative selection of autoimmune uh, T cells. Uh, in addition to the genetic susceptibility, it's uh, also known that there are environmental factors that are affecting uh, T1D susceptibility, uh, possibly uh, through uh, a microbiome as one of the mechanisms through the regulation of uh, uh, Th17 cells. Yeah. Uh, for, the, for the human type 1 diabetes, however, it has been quite challenging to study. Uh, as many of uh, you probably know, that this is a disease that develops over months or, or even years or even decades. So uh, it's very um, uh, difficult to specify or to know when the uh, autoimmunity towards the pancreatic beta cells are uh, started. Uh, furthermore, there are a lot of antigens that are involved. Insulin is noted uh, one of the most notable ones, but there are also other genes and the proteins present in the uh, human pancreatic beta cells. Uh, furthermore, it's, uh, uh, it's very difficult to obtain the, um, the patient samples as, a, as many of the uh, type 1 uh, diabetes. Uh, at the time of diagnosis, there are a lot of uh, a tremendous loss of pancreatic beta cells. So to address these uh, challenges, we um, try to use the human propotent stem cell engineering to come up with uh, solutions for these different challenges. So our initial goals include uh, some criteria such that, uh, that we want to develop uh, 
a relatively tractable and robust system so that we can study this disease in a reasonable period of time rather than over years. Uh, furthermore, we want to have an antigen specific interaction between the human uh, beta cells or beta like cells and the human T cells. Uh, additionally, we would like to have this interaction both studied at the at the in vitro setting and also in vivo setting by using the so-called humanized mice. And the question we would like to address, um, unfortunately couldn't cover all aspects of type one diabetes as we hope that one day we will do. Uh, rather we focus on several aspects. So the, the first one is uh, how the human beta cells or beta-like cells respond to autoimmune um, uh, T cells uh, uh, during the early stages of the, um, uh, the, the disease development, because uh, uh, for human type one diabetes, it's very difficult to capture very early stages. However, with this engineer system, we can capture some aspect of the early stages. And then we want to understand what's the beta cells response. And then are there um, any mechanism that are potentially contributing to the disease progression and possibly offering therapeutic um, uh, opportunity to to prevent the disease from progress rapidly or from, from further progressing. So we end up with a, 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 a genome editing with the CRISPR CPF1 system uh, by targeting the human insulin locus. So in the cartoon diagram in here, we had a two system. On the left is a control system. Uh, we um, targeted the endogenous uh, insulin gene so that the the, um, the human purported stem cells, they have the TD tomato, which is a red fluorescent protein, and also luciferase genes after the, the human insulin gene. Uh, you will see in a second why we use the, the luciferase, such that after the human purported stem cells, engineered stem cells, when they differentiate into the insulin producing uh, pancreatic beta like cells, the, the cells will also show the TD tomato signal, as you can see in this, what we call the, um, uh, uh, the facts plot on the uh, x-axis showing the TD tomato expressing cells. That's our control condition. For our experimental condition, we use a similar strategy, but uh, instead of putting TD tomato, we put a CD19, which is a surface protein that typically um, does not have anything to do with the beta cell biology, rather it's expressed in the, in the B cells. So uh, it's kind of an orthogonal molecule to this system such that we achieve a minimum perturbation to the beta cell differentiation. Um, with this system, when uh, this insulin CD19 cells differentiate into insulin producing beta cells, they will express a CD19, which is a surface cell surface protein, will display CD19 on the beta cells. As you can see on the bottom panel, when we stain this, the live cells with the anti-CD19 antibody that is fluorescent labeled, we can detect that uh, there is a surface uh, uh, expression of CD19. Importantly, when we inject those uh, differentiated the beta-like cells, uh, whether they are CD19 expressing or the TD tomato expressing, they were able to control the glucose uh, homeostasis, uh, so to speak, to normalize the glucose levels in the NRG Akita mice, which is a severe diabetic mice, in both the free feeding and, uh, and the fasting conditions. So indicating that those cells, they, uh, prop they have proper function of pancreatic beta cells. Next, uh, we uh, constructed this in vitro interaction by using these um, beta-like cells from the engineered human proponent stem cells and a CD19 um, uh, CAR modified um, uh, T cells. So for that one, I'll just give you some background. Normally for T cells, typically the CD8 cytotoxic T cells to, uh, to be activated and recognize antigen, there are two signals needed. They are from the, the T cell receptor that recognize the particular antigen that um, uh, they, they, um, they, they, could, uh, they could bind. Uh, uh, additional signals they uh, sometimes refer as a tonic signal coming from the CD28 receptor. So with the two signal, the T cell can be activated. For the, the chimeric antigen T cells or the CAR T cells, there is a, a, a chimeric receptor, what's called a CAR receptor, that are able to integrate the two signals into one molecule. 
that upon binding with its recognition, uh, recognized uh, antigen um, uh, conferred by this uh, um, uh, antibody-like protein recognized particular antigen, in this case recognized CD19. So both the CD28 and the CD3 signal will be activated. So the, uh, so, uh, the CD19 CAR T cells, when they see um, uh, CD19, they will become activated. So the experimental diagram we showed is illustrated in here. So we use the CD19 expressing beta-like cells or the TV tomato expressing the control beta-like cells to, to incubate with the, the CD19 CAR T cells or control CAR T cells that has everything except this actual domain that bind to CD19. And we measure the luciferous activity as a, a indication of cell survival because the cells also express luciferase, so both the insulin CD19 and the insulin TD tomato cells. As shown in this diagram here, as you can see, when we increase the ratio of uh, CD19 CAR T cells to the beta-like cells, we can see that we can achieve very rapid and robust uh, toxicity against the beta-like cells, as indicated by this uh, reduction of luciferase activity typically coming from live cells. Uh, whereas this toxicity is very specific for CD19 expressing beta-like cells, but not for the CD T tomato expressing beta-like cells, indicating this antigen specificity. Uh, furthermore, we're able to use this uh, conditioned medium to treat the, the beta-like cells and, and obtain what genes are differentially expressed. So this is uh, to simulate the very early stage of, of autoimmune um, uh, diabetes. We could see many genes are upregulated, including um, this gene, called, although it's called CD274. It can be also referred as the PD1 ligand, uh, which is typically our target for the immuno oncology. And, uh, but naturally, this gene is res responding to some of the interferon signaling and upregulated also in these beta cells. So in addition to that, uh, we also noticed some other genes, including one of them is called the gastrin D, among other genes. Um, uh, such as uh, the, the caspase 4 uh, uh, showing up in here, which we'll mention uh, 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 in more details. So in addition to this uh, in vitro interaction between the human beta-like cells and, uh, and the human T cells, we we'll want to test whether we can reconstitute this interaction in vivo by using the uh, transplantation to immunocompromised mice. As you can see in this diagram, the left panel there is a control mice, they don't have the luciferous signal as showing up by this heat map um, signal. So basically the hotter the, the colors are, the stronger the signals are. So both uh, the insulin TD tomato and the insulin CD19 transplanted beta-like cells have the luciferous signal as you can see in here. Uh, when we have the control CAR T cells that lack this CD19 binding domain, we see that the signal are similar. However, when we introduce the CD19 CAR T cells, we can specifically uh, significantly reduce the um, luciferous signal from the um, insulin um, CD19 cells, similar to this in, um, in vitro study, indicating that we, we can study this uh, um, beta cell and T cell uh, in, in vivo in this humanized mice. Furthermore, because we saw the PD-1 upregulation, uh, we hypothesized that uh, the beta cells upon autoimmunity try to upregulate uh, the PD-1 ligand. However, this level is probably insufficient. So we use a non-viral uh, viral transduction um, experiment uh, to integrate this uh, uh, PD-1 ligand expressing cassette into a safe harbor locus. And as you, you can see, this. Uh, proponent stem cells they express a high level of PD-1 ligand. And uh, interestingly, um, when we transplant these uh, cells uh, into, uh, into mice and introduce CD19 CAR T cells, we do see some uh, uh, protection from this uh, uh, PD-1 overexpressing the beta-like cells. As you can see that uh, there are human uh, T cells um, around that. As you can see by this red, the human CD8 uh, 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 staining. However, the, the beta-like cells, as shown by this C-peptide staining, the, the green color show the better protection compared to this control cells that the, the beta cells that only express uh, CD19, but they did not overexpress PD-1 ligand. Uh, furthermore, we found that the expression of PD-1 ligand can reduce the level 
of interleukin-2, um, uh, which uh, possibly partially explain why this T cell activity was, uh, was reduced in this condition. So that was uh, uh, interesting and consistent with the literature. Um, however, we, we did notice there were some uh, other genes that uh, people didn't think would uh, act in this uh, beta cells during the autoimmunity. So one of them is called the gastrin D and the two uh, the proteins called the caspase, caspase 4 and caspase 1. They caught our attention because uh, um, uh, uh, a couple of years back, it's been noticed that uh, this gastrin D play a role in this uh, 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 relatively new type of cell uh, cell dies pathways, so it's called the paraptosis. Essentially, this gastrin D, when they're activated through the proteolytic uh, activation, they form a ring-like structure and the punch holes on the cell membrane, such that the internal content will be released and uh, in a very dramatic and inflammatory um, uh, way of cell death, rather than the typical apoptosis that uh, um, uh, has been considered to be the major mechanism for beta cell death during um, uh, type 1 diabetes. So to test that, uh, we use a um, activated gastrin D antibody to, to stain for, for beta cells. And I just want to draw your attention to this panel in here that uh, we do see that it's activated, the cleaved form of gastrin D can be detected when the uh, T cell conditioned medium uh, were used to treat the beta-like cells. Uh, similarly, we hypothesized that this, uh, uh, this ER stress could contribute to this process as well. So we use a, 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 a molecule called tunicamycin that induces uh, uh, ER stress. We are also able to detect gastrin D. Uh, furthermore, we, uh, uh, because uh, uh, both caspase 1 and caspase 4 has been um, a candidate for activating gastrin D, we test whether the inhibitor of uh, either of these caspases were able to reduce the, uh, the level of active gastrin D. And we found that uh, caspase 4 inhibitor seemed to be significantly capable of reducing the active gastrin D, whereas caspase 1 uh, didn't. So these results indicate to us that this, this model over here, that during the uh, uh, inflammation and autoimmunity, because of cytokine, uh, even the, the beta cells, they are not being directly targeted by CDA T cells, they would undergo this, uh, uh, this inflammation response that uh, um, they need to upregulate the, the surface expression of HLA uh, and also other genes that uh, go through the ER, potentially increasing the ER load and the ER stress. And uh, uh, both the, the gene expression level gastrin D was upregulated, and so is the same for the caspase 4. And the activated caspase 4 would cleave the gastrin D such that they form the active, this uh, oligomer structure that uh, forms a uh, ring like structure on the beta cell surface to uh, induce an inflammatory cell death, potentially propelling this anti beta cell uh, autoimmunity. So these are the, some of the model we, we propose. Um, and so essentially, in summary, I will not go through all the details, but uh, just to recap, we use a, um, a genome engineering approach to construct this uh, uh, CD19-specific interaction between human T cells and human beta-like cells. And we found this uh, form of cell, cell death and uh, suggesting that the potentially caspase 4 inhibitor could uh, suppress this for this inflammatory cell or form of, of beta cell death. Um, so this uh, work has been published. If uh, you have a further question, you can uh, feel free to contact me, let me know, or to check out the, this study for uh, further information. Uh, again, I would like to um, thank everyone to enable this work and also thank Monica for, for this great opportunity to share our work. This is, um, Hiting, this is really just an elegant paper, as I said before, but I, I just, and I think it, it, it kind of um, makes room for, for more exploration using this system, right? Uh, yes, exactly. So uh, you can, you particularly you can, add, you can add and delete all different components and, and um, explore, you know, different, um, different outcomes. Right. 
So uh, from uh, uh, in this process, we understand that this uh, um, CAR T cell mediated uh, immunity is probably much stronger than the normal T cell activation. Uh, yeah. But uh, we were excited to see that the PD-1 ligand overexpression could partially rescue. I think in normal um, condition, that's potentially can further improve this, uh, this benefit. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. And also, I think in the future work, if there are TCR, uh, T cell receptors specific for beta cell antigen, including insulin or some other physiologically more relevant antigen, could also be uh, put in this uh, situation. And just use, uh, we could just use the regular um, uh, uh, insulin reporter without the, the CD19. Yeah. And so, what do you think? Um, what's your next experiment then? Can you disclose oh. or no? Okay. So, actually, uh, uh, so related to T cell receptor, we think there are potentially two, two avenues based on the literature. So one is potentially related to not uh, the, uh, like say typical CD4 uh, T cells, but uh, another class of uh, uh, regulatory T cell, uh, the, the Treg is potentially uh, their um, uh, function will be to reduce uh, autoimmunity. Uh, furthermore, the, another class of uh, helper T cells, because uh, the TH17 has been hypothesized to mediate a lot of uh, uh, tissue damage in the context of uh, the, the autoimmunity. Uh, so, so right now we are uh, we have a, a study that is in, um, uh, uh, just under review of on on the on the hepatocytes. So we we study the the liver for for one reason because of the. The, the liver is typically considered to be um, immunosuppressive uh, uh, environment, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. to some extent, uh, uh, probably contributing to this tissue resident uh, the macrophages uh, in the liver called the Kruger cells, and mm -hmm. uh, potentially uh, for for the pancreas, uh, what are the role of uh, uh, non um, parenchymal cells, including resident uh, um, macrophages and also fibroblasts, uh, potentially uh, could be further further explored for. Um, for interventional opportunities. Um, just to clarify, the Kupfer cells just hang out in the liver, though, right? They're not, they're not moving in. That's their residence. Uh, yes. So they are considered to come from progenitor during early embryonic development, and they typically reside in the in the liver, and they can self renew for a relatively very long period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, however, uh, in uh, if I recall correctly. If people ablate the resident Kruger cells, there are circulating monocytes that could also come to the liver to replenish, uh, because they, their identity to some extent can be reprogrammed by the by the liver micro environment. Interesting. Um, yeah. Um, I I wonder if anyone else has any questions. I see there's a couple people in the audience. If you want to ask anything in the chat or just um, unmute yourself and ask, feel free. Uh, hi, uh, thanks for sharing our data. I have, a, I think, a basic question. I don't know if I'm sure. missing something. Uh, so in your model, you use um, beta-like cells that express the CD19. If you were to use another cell type that is not related to beta cells, I don't know, let's say fibroblasts, and they were also expressing, let's say, CD19, would mm -hmm. you expect the same response or do you think that what you are seeing is because it's a specific, uh, some kind of specific to beta cells? Do you understand what I'm asking? Uh, yes. All right. Thank you so much for this uh, very uh, uh, good question. So we think that some of the response are uh, probably conserved uh, among multiple cell type, uh, especially the PD-1 ligand. Um, it's been shown that it typically in this immuno-oncology field that uh, many tumor cells, uh, including neighboring stromal cells under the um, inflammation cytokine influence, they will upregulate PD-1 PD ligand. So uh, some of them will be conserved. Uh, but uh, for some uh, um, uh, additional genes, uh, they not be, uh, uh, could be like beta cell specific because it, in here we did mention there is a, um, a gene called the IAPP, which is uh, also a hormone or hormone-like peptide that produced by the beta cells. Um, uh, potentially have the role in regulating appetite. It's uh, it's also uh, uh, upregulated in this condition. We think this uh, uh, probably will be beta cell specific, uh, but we do see that uh, 
um, uh, seems uh, and also the insulin expression surprisingly didn't seem to reduce because the beta cells they still have the function to you know produce the insulin even under uh, this kind of inflammation condition. So we think this probably together will exacerbate this uh, the ER stress uh, condition. And uh, I, I, yes, you're right. So uh, also I, I, I didn't uh, have time to mention during the early GWAS study, we, we do see some of the similarity, similar genes uh, uh, that control susceptibility to type one diabetes to some other autoimmune disease such as the uh, like autoimmune thyroid disease. And uh, the, the air genes that uh, the, uh, showed up earlier, that, that's uh, uh, the loss of function or reduced function is responsible for a lot of uh, autoimmune uh, diseases. So yes, there are, there are definitely quite a lot of uh, commonality between the autoimmune um, uh, disease toward the beta cells and toward other cell types, yes. I don't know if that okay, answered your question. You. Yes, you did, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I wonder, um, you know, Hey Ting, what is your your thought about whether or not the ER is particularly, you know, susceptible to stress in these cells? Um, you know, in these these beta-like cells, um, is it is that comparable to the ER susceptibility to stress in a beta in a in a real beta cell? Yeah, that's a, another uh, great question. So I, I'm not a um, expert on the on the ER biology. I definitely think it's a fascinating organ control, uh, probably in the central role, control the secretory pathways. This is, this is a particularly important for, for example, beta cells, and probably more so for the exocrine, the, the asthma cells in, in, in the pancreas. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, there are, are um, studies um, um, focusing on the the pathway to control the, the ER. Um, and uh, for some of the specialized the secretory cells, there, um, um, there, there could be a mechanism for, for maintaining the ER and uh, make it uh, less susceptible to, to stress. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, um, how the protein is filled and how they uh, um, activate the ER stress. And uh, uh, I, personally, I'm not aware of uh, you know, there's uh, probably there are that uh, study like beta cell specific ER stress pathway and then the, in the other other cell types. But I, I think it's quite quite interesting to to look at. Yeah. Now this will be a really interesting model system to explore a number of different um, you know paradigms. I think right. I mean you could look at, you could use this in other autoimmune. Um, diseases to, to sort of model them and and you could I mean it's really it's really a pretty amazing <clears throat> system and I mean I think it's definitely has right it has some bearing on not just what happens in the beta cell during the progression to diabetes in vivo but like how you know you could use this to sort of model what's happening in beta cell implants yes yes exactly yeah. Yeah, so furthermore, I think uh, one of the surprising aspects is uh, so the, this kind of pyroptosis initially are considered to be kind of a special way, uh, particularly for this uh, innate immune cells to alarm the body uh, of, uh, of infection, uh, um, uh, microbial infection, uh, for example. Mm -hmm. but, but there are accumulating evidence that is not, a, um, um, there are other cell types, particularly uh, also the, the hepatocytes they can undergo this non-apoptotic uh, cell death. So, so the program cell death used to be, you know, considered to be equivalent for apoptosis. But right now, it's uh, uh, it's it's amazing like how different forms of cell death could uh, confer different biology consequences and potentially different roles in disease progression and uh, uh, and offers opportunity for for disease uh, uh, prevention and uh, treatment. Yeah, and when you mentioned the fact that the bacteria, right, or microbial um, infection can initiate pyroptosis versus the typical apoptosis, right? That kind of that that brings up again the the influence of the microbiome, changes in the microbiome, changes in the Th seventeen, and maybe there's some kind of who knows impact uh, to create this pyroptosis environment. 
Yes, I agree. Yeah. So it's been yes, the bi microbiota has been considered to be one of the environmental factors for for the type one diabetes in addition to the genetic uh, predispositions. Yeah. Well, it's going to be really interesting to see what um, comes of uh, the use of this uh, platform or or this you know this model, and uh, we really are excited to see what you do next. I, I appreciate you so much uh, for coming on and um, it was great to have you and, and listen to this uh, really beautiful work. Thank you again. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity to, to share our work.